Tactics are extremely important in Unicorn Overlord, especially when your group is not killing. Now, some team comps can easily kill with minimal tactics, but for those that require heavy conditions, let's go into how to set these conditions and what they do. All right, so here's an example of a lane uh, with three different armor-based triggers on magic attack. Let's go through all of them. So this first one is going to only attack with magic attack and armored. So if there are no armored targets available, it will skip this, this action and it'll go to something else. This one, prioritize armored, will try to find armored as a priority, but if there's something else and there's no armored that it can attack, the unit will, the, the character will attack anything else, just randomly. So depending on their position, uh, so like if you're in the middle, for example, and there's an enemy on the northmost and southmost positions, it will literally just randomly attack either one. You can specify with a second condition. So for example, uh, prioritize armored, and then maybe one of the enemies took damage, and then we want to also prioritize lowest HP, so that if something is low, if there's no armored, he'll try to go for a kill. So that's like a very basic catch-all for like a priority. Now in this case, if there is no armored to attack, he just never will do it. And then of course there is armored enemies present, which means that do not activate this ability unless the enemy team has at least an armor somewhere. Now this is generally more useful in passive abilities, but it is useful to call it out and to mention it. Now when actually inputting these things and setting them up, if you go to combat type, prioritize is under combat type. So prioritize scout. So maybe you want a true thrust scout so you could prioritize scout, but then if not, it'll just attack whoever. Uh, you could prioritize uh, through explicitly forcing them to fight a scout. So only use this ability if there's a scout. Uh, so it's very useful. And then enemies present is useful for countering magic, for example. So if you have like a Radiant Knight, or if you have some kind of block or ability that debuffs mages or reduces incoming magic damage, not doing that unless casters are present and then defaulting to something else is pretty useful to do. Uh, similarly for archers present, if there is a unit that's weak to archers, you can use this condition. So that way it checks to see what the enemy squad has. Now, some of these conditions are certainly better than others and some of them seem kind of useless, but most of them are kind of usable. Uh, so let's go over enabling and disabling things. So if you look at the little thing there on the side where it says like edit set tactics, the little like tool tips, if you push in the right thumbstick, you can actually disable tactics manually. So if you want to just switch to lean edge to heal, you can disable everything but lean edge in this case, and then he'll just target lowest HP so that you can go for a heal. Uh, and then for noble guard, we have it set for back row. So block an enemy attack with medium guard, grant the user plus one passive points. So the reason why noble guard is first over all these other things, these, uh, these function luminous cover functions under any attack. So if they attack with magic, you can block it or ranged and so on. Uh, this is just a physical attack, which does, uh, it does hit range attacks, but it doesn't hit range magical attacks, for example, or magical attacks in general. But this is used first so that I can check for if I can get one more passive point, especially if my health is below 50%, which it can be at times, so that I get a free block, basically. So that's first, and then we have Luminous Cover. So cover the front row with medium guard. Now this also, so I'm checking for magically attacked, front row, archer, enemy archer present front row. So the reason for this is enemy archers in the demo are really one of the few sources of true strike. And I have an avoid tank in the front. And I'm also trying to prevent that avoid tank from getting hit with multi-hit magic. So I'm specifically guarding the front row from magic and true hit attacks explicitly. And then I have a catch-all uh, for the back row well, where I will luminous cover the back row. Now, if I notice the enemy back row or ranged units are focusing on my back row and we don't die, I might disable this so that this is focused on because it depends on who they attack too, right? So like if the enemy doesn't attack the front row and they like shoot the back row for like 10 damage, it doesn't even matter. I'm going to luminous cover. I'm going to noble guard and then I'm going to luminous cover uh, that unit. Uh, actually, in this condition, I would never Luminous cover the back row. Uh, I would only Noble Guard it unless they used uh, something else, like a range attack. That's actually why that's set here, actually, now that I think about it. 
This isn't like a mistake. This is actually set for a reason. So this is physical attack blocking. We want to prioritize gaining passive points back. It also gives a defense boost. Uh, this also gives the defense boost, but it does not give passive points back. So we do this for ranged attacks only. And the only way this would really even be able to trigger is if it was a ranged physical attack. Maybe it's like a Griffin Knight, something like that. Uh, so this is like the basic setup for this unit. So let's look at some others. So this is a basic setup for like a boost bot, we'll call it. Uh, so a unit that just keen calls with Dancer's Bracelet. Um, so keen call... Or I'm sorry, that's not the answer's bracelet. Keen Call is 100% crit, which is useful, uh, but you could also switch this with Powerful Call, which is the dancer's bracelet. So if you have a unit who's just sitting on a passive point so that they don't have anything to do with, with it, you can just throw dancer's bracelet on them, and then they can boost another ally's attack. And this is especially useful because Clive is the hard carry of this group that goes for all the kills. Uh, he also gets helped by Elaine and, of course, um, Melisandra. <laughs> But this is like the big thing here. So this will only target Clive because he's the only Cav on the team. Now, if there's another Cav on the team, but it's in the front row or something, I could change this to let's see front row under formation and situation. So now he, or I'm sorry, back row. So now she will only use it on the back row uh, Cav. Now there's other conditions too. So for example, if you want to, specify Clive you can't explicitly specify Clive but what you can do is look at his stats and let's say he has like higher initiative <laughs> than another unit uh, so like if he has the highest initiative of the other calves or the lowest you can target this which will indirectly specifically single him out because it's just looking for calves so it's like okay so it passes the cav logic gate and then if there's two calves and Clive has 19 initiative and the other calf has 18 and he has, you know, the highest initiative, it'll it'll always single him out. So in the case of targeting a specific class where there's multiples of it, this is how you would do that. Um, and then for other things, so like let's say, for example, uh, you know you're going to kill the enemy team without powerful call and you want to start healing, you would disable it. This allows you to keep your formation so you don't you can re-enable it for a fight that needs it. Uh, but you can disable it and then she's going to start healing lowest same thing with like a lane and his uh lean edge so like if we know we need lean edge healing we can just disable these other attacks to make sure now this this here will always activate before these because it's just a catch-all so you have to keep in mind that certain conditions will always execute and you should test these out uh in the personal battle thing in the forts and i'll show that in a second but you should always test things out to make sure they execute the way you want and not assume your logic is good. You always like that's what you do in coding, right? When you execute some code, you want to make sure everything works as intended. You want to scrutinize it. All right. So for this long thrust, true thrust business. Uh, so she will only long thrust a full column right now. So if there's not a full column, she won't. Uh, the true thrust, she will only true thrust if there are enemy scouts present. And basically what I would do for this situation is if there's a column of scouts that I know long thrust is very likely going to miss i'll just toggle it off and then she can true thrust and then if there are no scouts present and i want to have her attack the back row or specifically flyers i could change the condition of javelin or i could make a new condition of javelin so javelin all right so flyers they have double dodge rate versus grounded melee so javelin is a ranged attack so it is not a melee attack so javelining a flyer could be valuable especially if it's like annoying for your team and it's hard to deal with you could of course always just true thrust it too but this gives you an option and you also can target the back line of enemies like let's say you know your team does some ability some aoe some column attack and then you just need to last hit something that's no longer in a column and this character can't hit you can javelin it or maybe she kills a thing with a javelin as soon as the fight starts for example uh, so these conditions are useful and it's useful to switch through your attacks and in some cases change the conditions of these attacks so that you get kills and of course having a catch-all is always nice too like if none of these things are true uh no scouts presence no full column no back row like let's say there's just front row left and then there's something to javel there's no flyer to javelin you could just make like a generic uh hp lowest typically hp lowest tends to be almost always the best <laughs> it's, like there's all these conditions and there's all these things but just having the right attack out on hp lowest tends to be more than enough so that's, I think some people go too crazy with 
like coding all of these conditions in in reality i think the best way to play is to play simply so this is how i like to do it i just like to have so like let's say uh, i just have like long thrust out or whatever lowest hp so like if there's a column i need to target i'll just change the condition to column if there's something i need to true thrust i'll just change it to true thrust pretty quickly and the reason i prefer this is because it's minimalistic the interactions are simple there's minim like there's almost no complexity to worry about like enabling or disabling the right or wrong things and typically it gets you the best results with the the simplest moves so in chess typically the most simple the more simple a move is like simple strong moves that improve your position steadily tend to be better than more complicated moves that have higher risk and typically your opponent also catches on to what you're doing if you're trying to go for some weird play uh, but like this is a nightmare honestly i wouldn't play like this <laughs> i like for my i would do something like this for these conditions it's fine uh for like passive conditions and triggers i think this is where this system shines but for offensive triggers i highly recommend just keeping it simple and just having like one or two attacks present and just using those attacks exactly uh, per scenario now you can have templates so if i hit x right now and save this I can save this template and load this template. So you can have, you can get crazy with these and spend a lot of time creating your perfect templates. So like you could have one for dealing with armors, you could have one for dealing with, uh, you know, true enemies that you need to like hit with true attacks. You could have one for dealing with mages and so on. Whatever team comps give your particular uh, group trouble, you can save these tactics templates and then load them. So there's that. Uh, and then to load them, uh, save slash load so there you go you just go down there load it uh, but there's that and then for other units let's check out clive uh, so clive he's on wild rush uh for full column first action so first action is very good it's the first unit's action it's not the first action of the battle so like the first thing he's going to do is try to wild rush right and he'll only wild rush a full column now if i don't need this i can just toggle it off so having like the stuff like this i think is perfectly fine the wild rush stuns and it also lane nukes so it hits up to two things in a column right so stunning two things as your first action is hugely valuable now in some situations that's not needed you can just assaulting lance spam but in some situations it's nice to have and also consider he will cab call himself uh, before doing this so it does a little bit more damage than you would think and then also if he gets buffed with uh powerful call and then he does that he gets two buffs uh, actually maybe he doesn't if it's limited he doesn't and uh, no i think he would and when it says limited so like limited if it says trait limited it shouldn't work let's actually test that let's check let's check it out and also show the the uh mock battle the mock battle is good for testing things so let's send in clive's unit uh, this unit needs <laughs> like a tank or something, so I don't immediately lose. All right, let's check it out. Mock battle between these two. Okay. I'm fairly certain it stacks, because if it's not limited, so her thing is limited, hasten strike. It's going to do... Oh, that actually did good damage against him. He must be low level. Offensive curse. So it cursed the wrong thing. And she's out of curses now. She just cursed the front line, so we can check what our team does. All right, so magic attack and armored. Opening them up. Cav call. Powerful call. Yeah, so if, if it's not limited, you can stack them. If it's limited, you cannot. Yeah, and then he just goes for assaulting lances. Then she just true thrusts generically. She didn't really have a target here. Now, I could have her target casters, for example. And she would attack the witch and probably kill it. And I could just switch her to her highest damage attack. Or even just like javelin the witch. Alright, then we got frozen. Keen edge crits for one. <laughs> this guy might block. Okay, he gets hit. He gets hit for huge damage. Yeah, then he assaulting lances. So the armor break got through. Um, our avoid tank. Avoid tanked. <laughs> and we did get the double buff. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind uh, with buffs. You have to make sure that it's not limited if you want to stack them. So because it doesn't say limited under trait, you can stack it with other things. So this does uh, this does say limited. Same thing with uh, opening attacks. So like uh, Artenial Artenie Strike. <laughs> Artenie Strike? I don't know. Artenie Strike? Um, 
that's limited, and so is Hasten Strike. So you cannot have, for example, three sword fighters all use Hasten Strike at the start of battle. That would be cool as hell, and I that was my immediate thought, like, oh my god, uh, three sword fighters, uh, Hasten Strike times three, let's go. But you cannot do that. <laughs> you cannot Hasten Strike times three, <laughs> unfortunately. I know it's depressing. I know you want to Hasten Strike the entire enemy team before they can even act. But you can only get one of these. So if you have three sword fighters, only the, the, the highest initiative one will act with Hasten Strike uh, or Artony Strike. I wanted to call it Arterial Strike, but whatever. All right, so let's look at some of these other conditions briefly now that we've seen the interactions. Uh, you saw how he went for the armored. Now, if he would have more active points, he could have lean edged or magic attack to the armored and then lean edge the mage afterwards because it had lowest hp you can also target by hp so the percentages these are important lowest percent hp is tricky because there can be an enemy with like 100 max hp versus an enemy with like 50 max hp and technically they're both lowest hp if there's if they're both at full health right and it'll just randomly choose one same thing with highest percent if the percentage is the same it doesn't care what the number is for that situation you want lowest hp or highest hp so if you want to make sure your huge hitting unit that does like 70 or 80 damage hits the 100 HP guy, you can prioritize that as a target. And then also for lowest HP, if you want to make sure your lower or medium hitting unit that can kill like a major or a ranger or something wants to hit that target, you set it to this. There are also HP uh, threshold triggers. This is useful for healing. Uh, so for example, target is HP like 70%, 70% HP or less is really good on like quick heal on your cleric that's typically how i use it otherwise if it's like less than 100 they'll just be healing anything constantly and it's just kind of a waste uh, but lowest percent hp or target hp is less than 75 percent are good for healing abilities less than 100 is generally bad because if you have a guard like a blocking unit or an evasion tank that takes like three damage they're gonna get healed and very often that doesn't matter so you should kind of not do that uh, but HP, there's also average HP, uh, activates only if the average HP of targets is 75% or more. So for, for example, if you have a healer on your team and your team is overall healthy and doesn't really need a heal, you can use this as a condition. So it's like only heal if the average HP of the entire team is 75% or less. And then you could also set a secondary condition of uh, heal the lowest percent. So then you can, you can use like these as like logic gates, right? Uh, all right what else uh oh yeah action points and passive points hugely useful on, on key things right uh, especially once you start getting multiple active active and passive points you can control what attacks you do uh based on this right uh this can be this one is used for targeting enemies uh, so target combatants with set amounts of ap you can also use this on your own units uh so that if they target each other so for example we do not want to a uh, powerful call a unit that doesn't have active points, right? So we only want to use this on a cav that has one or more AP. And it works for whatever the target is. So it's very much like Magic the Gathering in that way, where it's like when a target something, doesn't matter if it's an ally or an enemy, um, as long as its condition is true and there's like a use or a benefit. And you could also do things like this too. So for example, for Wild Rush, uh, we could set own uh, action points and you want you would want to have two or more. So then his opening move. So because he has Carnelian Pendant, his opening move. He's looking for a full column, and he wants to have two or more action points. And then he'll execute this. Now I'm fairly certain this is an AND gate. So an AND gate is both conditions must be true. I do not think it's an OR gate. Actually, we'll test that too, just to to rule it out. Uh, so let's say his own. So there will be a full column, and we'll say his own AP is three or more, which is not something that he can do. Uh, so let's have these fight again. We'll, we'll just confirm that, because I'm fairly certain it is, but we'll make sure. So she hastens strikes. Now notice how quick Curse also activates immediately in response. Because that's it responds to a, an, a, an offensive action. And then her debuffing that is actually a mistake. She should be debuffing the back line, which could be set. All right, and then he does his magic attack. He's focusing armored. Now, Clive should not... All right, Cav call. All right, so there's no full column. Oh, let's actually skip this. There's no full column. 
Let's change the conditions. He kills, we kill the thing first. All right, so let's change full column uh, to, we'll just make it another condition that is true. Uh, let's just say lowest HP. So he'll always go for lowest, but his own AP needs to be three or more. So this, this should cause it to fail because that is an AND gate. So let's just confirm that. He should not use the, the one attack. But you can get pretty sophisticated with some of these interactions. I recommend if you're going to go hard in the paint for making these super complicated uh, team interactions and enemy interactions to just save loadouts and then load them and then tweak them as needed. And you can also make it so that the loadouts have extra conditions that you just toggle on and off. So you can basically set everything. All right, so cab call, powerful call, assaulting lands. Yeah, so he doesn't use it because it's an AND gate. It's good to prove things, too, because sometimes people will push back with misinformation, and sometimes people push back with correct information, which is fine. Uh, always correct things if you're right about something, like objectively, in terms of numbers and like mechanics. I'm fine with that. All right, so unit formation. To wrap up this video. So the conditions are AND gates. They can be toggled. You can save loadouts. You can load loadouts. You can have up to five uh, per character, which is very useful. You can also change weapons before combat, which gets kind of more advanced and sophisticated. So like this whole thing of like Elaine being married to the runic sword is just not true. Before combat, if there is an unequipped weapon, you can just switch to it. So you could just immediately be like, oh, there's no enemy armored present. I'm just gonna lean edge on Hallowed Blade. And what does Hallowed Blade do? Heal plus 10% when using active skill, max HP plus five. And then he would just default to lean edge in this case because he loses his magic attack. So you can get pretty, pretty specific with exactly what you do. Same thing for passives. Like, let's say I had another Carnelian pendant and I need an extra lean edge to kill or whatever. I could do that as well. Or maybe there is an enemy cav that I want to farm passive points off of with cav guard or an enemy flyer that I want to put farm passive points off of. So you can switch shields, you can switch weapons, you can switch passives, you can toggle on and off abilities, you can change the conditions of these abilities, and you can also get down to the point where you have several loadouts and then you just load out, you just switch your loadouts based on what the enemy's formations are. And that's pretty much it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. I will be going into more detail once there are bigger team comps. I think someone said you only get up to five units at the max level. Maybe you get six. I would think you could get six, but maybe it is five. But we at least get up to five unit squads, and that's where things are going to get super complicated. Uh, but yeah, definitely like and subscribe, and I'll see you next one. Peace.